Justine. I am with the LGBT podcast group. Today we're going to be talking about gender identity and social religion. I have the I- wonderful Eve Sanchez with me. Hello, America. Um, so today we're going to be talking about like makeup for men, gender identity as a trans individual. Oh, um, is there a trans person coming? Yeah, isn't it you? Okay, Eve. Yeah. Okay, anyways. You're Not that I know anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so how do you identify yourself? Okay, so when I was in I was in a bad mood the other day and we were talking about planning to do this podcast and I was thinking about my answers and the mood I was in, I was gonna be really weird and say I don't identify with anything. You were gonna be very robotic. I, I was can hear it now. And already talking about Ulta Beauty and like our credit card and just what okay. are you talking about? I'm not no. robotic. You were that day. I was. No, and the, but that's the thing. Like, retail does that to you. It's just, like, yeah. all the same stuff. So you you kind of have to dehumanize yourself. Like, you, like I joked on Black Friday. Like, there was one of our coworkers that she was, like, nervous. And, like, I said, just, like, shut down your emotions. And it was a joke, but it's kind of true. You kind of just have to put on this, like, you know, everybody has. Isn't that sad? That, like, you have society, to society, you have to dissociate. Just, <laughs> our existentialism comes out and just, like, yeah. spurts. No. Like, the other day, my friend and I, she, she she just made like some random noise and it was like, uh, and she was like, are you okay? And she's like, no, that was just my existential crisis just See, leaking out of me. No. And that's the thing. I'm actually working on a memoir for one of my classes and it's kind of using, you know, Marxism and anti-capitalist ideas to explore my life. Cause that's one of the things yeah. is that, like, you know, retail, I think causes kind of existential crises cause you're, you're talking to people all day, every day, but you're not making true connections. You're just yeah, like rehearsed no. lines, you know? Ugh. But, um, but so yeah, I kind of, and your voice is different. No one is actually their true self during re- exactly. their retail because it's just like our true self is never going to be good enough. Well, but this takes me back to the original question, which spiritually, I believe there's no fixed self, you know? Yeah. I think most people, I think identity is fake. Identity is an illusion. Um, I think anytime you have an image of who you are, especially with like the Instagram generation, I think we're more encouraged to do that. I don't think that's real. Um, and so when I get in these existential moments, especially whether it's working retail or whether it's just pressure from society, which I do also feel, yeah. um, when I feel like I'm forcing myself to bring out one side of myself more versus there are times when like one side of yourself comes out more naturally, even though I don't think anything's natural either, but that's a whole other conversation. But you know, <laughs> but, you know everybody has these different sides of themselves that come out more or less in different situations. But when I feel like I'm forcing myself to bring out another side of myself I can feel I can feel more existential um but really you know as much as I do believe there's no fixed self and I think um I I don't really I de- like I'm not invested in any one identity because I I think I see everything in society as fake you are amazing <laughs> no, I, really, I really do because even stupid stuff like you think of like you know people who are anti-trans will be like you should just be a man you should just wear these clothes and do this like a man should and like Okay, maybe, like, you know, calling myself a man, whatever, I, I'm not invested in that at label. Personally, I know some trans people do believe other things, um, which is fine. But for me, it's like, I'm not invested in that label. I just hate, I just, like, choose label that feels right to me. Um, because I see, like, all these labels as, like, fake. And I think words are never going to be enough to truly capture an identity. So all that being said, <laughs> um, currently, I do, like, identify as a trans woman. But... I think that means different things to different people. Yeah, I definitely but I, agree. Yeah, but I definitely also, when I say identify, like I call myself a trans woman, like if someone asks me, like I'd say, oh, I'm a trans woman, you know, or, but you know, I, I'm not like super, like, I don't want to say I'm not out cause I am like not ashamed of it, but I don't, and I don't, I haven't been on hormones in a while. So <laughs> that kind of jumps ahead to one of your questions, but it started cause I didn't have money and then it started cause I was like busy and then I was like. I had an identity crisis. I still kind of am. Um, but I still kind of, you know, actively identify that way externally. For sure. But then when you identity in terms of like, what do you connect with? I also kind of quote unquote identify with like gay men and gay male culture. Cause I think I, you know, that is kind of, you know, to an extent who I am, Yeah. but it's just, um, who I am in the world externally, how I express myself is a trans woman. And then what I identify with, um, spiritually, I mean, no, right. other words is, um, just like radical queerness and radical gayness that like, radical doesn't, queerness. yeah, no, literally, I want to make t-shirts that say that. No, literally that's like legit a thing. And like, I think I, I actually personally feel like I don't identify with like the mainstream current LGBT movement that much. And I, that doesn't mean like I disagree with it right? or like, I think it's bad, but just because like, for me, it's like, I wish we lived in a world where I didn't have to identify myself a certain way yeah. and everybody could just be like wear what you want, do what you want. And to me, that's radical queerness. And so I identify with that. You know, we don't need labels. We're just human. But at the same time in society, I don't think we should act as if labels don't have meaning. And that's the thing. It's this kind of conflict between 
I personally don't think any single word or identity or label will ever truly capture not only identity, but you know, we're, there's this Madonna quote here is the like, you know, Oh my God. Here's, so here's, gay. I was saying, here's, the, here's the gay man and me coming out, but there's this Madonna song that says words are useless, especially sentences. And that's like just a concept too, from like deconstruction. And, um, you know, it's like a concept that like, even like smart people like believe. And it's like, you know, it's really true that like words aren't really, you know, going to capture an emotion or an experience. No, or you're not, so right. You know? And so, so ideologically, I don't really, I have these mixed feelings about labels, but societally, I think it's really powerful when someone's able to label themselves and say, no, I am not this thing that you're trying to force me to be. I am this, you know? Um, and so in that way, I think labels and how you identify is really important, um, because it does send a message. And actually that's kind of why I kind of, you know, joked that I've had an identity crisis, but it is like, you know, as a trans, as a trans woman, Flips hair. <laughs> yes. um, you know, I, you know, again, that means different things to different people. And for me, um, as much as I am connected to that label, it is, I worry that people will take that to mean that I am afraid or ashamed to talk about, you know, I feel like there's this, cause there is, you know, if, if you're a feminine gay man, there's a shame in that. And I hate that it or might send the a message. very heterosexual straight male who has feminine qualities? Yeah, well, who, yeah who or any, any feminine. It? Yeah. My There's a shame in being really feminine. big into like the crop top and like yeah. super like that's like the seventies. Exactly. What do you mean? And Why can't men wear short shorts and crop tops? Exactly. Like, let so it happen. If you're any man who's perceived as feminine, like there's a shame from society there, and it's like you know, and so that. But I was I said gay specifically because I think um, again there's a power in going against those expectations right. and labeling yourself in that way. But yeah, like again, in an ideal world, it would be like if you like something, freaking wear it. You know. Yeah. <sighs> There's a lot to unpack there. I actually your existentialism just creeps no, out. No, no, it's bit. not existentialism. <laughs> it's more just social issues. Okay. Because I think most. I actually got into a Facebook argument about this. <laughs> Very brief. It was like just two comments, but so someone had shared this video praising makeup for men. Like more men are becoming comfortable wearing makeup, this and that. And the clips that they showed were men saying, "If you want to be more confident, you know, there shouldn't be shame in using little makeup to do it." And that made me feel gross because, like, one, I think. I do agree that men shouldn't be shamed if they want to wear makeup. But for me, I think not shaming men for wearing makeup is like, if you want to wear a lip gloss or eyeshadow, that's fun. That's creative. But to me, you know, the big cause of our time is not saying more genders should feel bad about their bodies and want to cover up their skin (laughs) with complexion products. You know, to me, I can't like, obviously I support that in terms of like, yeah, you shouldn't be shamed if you choose to wear like foundation as a man. But if you're asking me if I think anybody should want to wear a foundation, no. Like, I love the creative side of makeup. I love eyeshadow. I love lipstick. And I do love, you know, like, a, a good base can bring it all together. But, mm, but yeah. Exactly. And, <laughs> and, but I do think we need to be conscious of the fact that the way, the reasons why we see that as looking better is a societal construct. Yeah, and we shouldn't, I, again, yeah. we shouldn't invest in looking that way all the time. And so if you ask me if I support makeup for men, like, no, I don't support more people you know, feeling like they need to wear something on their face to feel confident. Yeah. But I don't think anybody should be shamed for doing that if they yeah. do feel, choose to do, deal with it that way. But I think for me, um, especially, you know, growing up as a feminine gay man who did want to play with makeup, the biggest thing, like, it wasn't about, obviously at that age, you're not like, I need to cover my dark spots. Right. At that age, you're like, exactly. At that <laughs> age, it's just like, I love these colors and I want to play with them. And that shouldn't be shame. That should be encouraged. Yeah. Creative, creative expression, regardless of what it is, whether it's playing dress up as a princess, whether it's a young girl when you play with trucks and For sure. you know, whatever, like if it's about creativity, that shouldn't be shamed. I think we shouldn't shame people for, you know, um, wanting to like wear makeup and complexion products, but we should be critical of where that's coming from. For me, yeah. I, I think I, it's the first stepping stone though. I think it is the, it's the reason why I think I'm like very for it. I do see where you're coming from. I totally agree. Like, I think like, I don't know the fact that everyone just feels like they just need to look better just to please other people is it's yeah, terrible it's stupid. stupid whatever i think that the reason why i'm for it especially with just like foundation concealer men kind of grew up and they didn't know like they don't how have to, to try care of <laughs> they also don't like know how to properly take care of themselves maybe i'm wrong but like i'm saying like skincare routine I mean, wise okay but just, see like, even that like skincare like i see what you're saying and i agree but it's like why is oily skin a problem if it's not causing like a health concern just because it looks bad, you know? Oh and my so, god. You're yeah. like blowing my mind. No, right literally. Now. Oh my god, okay. Don't You're get me right wrong, though. like she masks Sundays tomorrow. I love good skincare, but it's right. like there's like there's so much that we do that we don't question and it's like, no, like, yes, skincare is fun and it's nice to pamper yourself, but other than like, you know, like dermatologists that like, can help you with certain concerns that could be like 
you know, lead to disease or could be infection or this or that. But there are certain things that it's just like not preferable because it looks bad or because it's, you know, shit, you know, like like a a mole on your face. Like that doesn't have any health concern necessarily. If your doctor said that it's not cancers or whatever, it's nothing. But people like would want to cover that up or get rid of it, whatever. It's because we grew up and just, like... Exactly. In this, like, whole, like, plastic. Exactly. And, like, and now you see why I have... I'm so places. for it. Put something on my face. Let me look like a mannequin. I want to no, be... And, be but, and talk about me being robotic. I get in that mode sometimes, too, where it's, like, you want humans to be this, like, perfect, like, emotionless... Again, especially with the expectations of, like, capitalism. Right. Like, with the emotional labor that goes into retail, sometimes I'm just, like, I just want to lean into it. And just For be, sure. like, I'm just going to be a humanoid that doesn't look human and, like, whatever, and just doesn't have feelings, because that's what you want. And I kind of sometimes lean too far into that direction. Um, but obviously, my radical queer side wants to challenge that and wants to... I love you. Know, you. That's so... Yeah. yeah. And again, and so I, I agree with what you're saying. Like, you know, there's something with, like, taking care... Like, grooming yourself, obviously, yeah. not, like, having... Not, like, being... Even even being stinky though, like that's the thing. It's like it's not preferable, but like if there's not a skin concern, it's like your body produces odor. Sometimes it's unpleasant, and like I think you know it's bacteria and stuff. And so like you should clean yourself, but it's like if you're not, <laughs> but you don't wipe your ass. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And okay, have you seen that Reddit thread where it's like it was like a meme for a while, where it's like men like don't wipe their buds because it's gay supposedly, and so that kind of stuff. Obviously, that's basic hygiene care that men you don't see do. My face right now. Yeah. Oh, no. And why? yeah, I, I should have done like a trigger Some warning. That's disgusting. Don't wipe their ass either. So I, I mean, like but it see, would even, make sense. Even that. So it's this fine line. Which, no, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> I think because they're doing it because of like toxic masculinity and homophobia but I bring up that point I should have I feel gross bringing that up but it's just like (laughs) like there are certain things that like yeah the expectations for men are much lower in some ways um but I think again we need to be we need to acknowledge that well and and make space for them to take better care of themselves without putting pressure take care of themselves physically and mentally like yeah, emotionally, emotionally like that. Yeah. yeah, and honestly, I like low key almost became like red pill. <laughs> oh. just, you know, just as I have like been on my journey and been like being introspective and stuff. Um, again, I really do connect with. I do think men are under a lot of pressure that even they don't recognize. Even all these red pill bros, I think they focus on the wrong things. Mm-hmm. But it's like you know, like yeah, the suicide rates suicide rates for men are really really high. We should yeah. do a trigger warning before this, but um, you know, and things like that. And I think even men don't realize. Especially because they've been so brainwashed that they have this power fantasy to be muscular and big and strong and overpower Mm -hmm. people. Um, And so because they have been conditioned to want that or maybe naturally want it, if you want to argue that, as much as you might believe it's natural, at the same time, I think anybody feeling pressure from the world or even from themselves to achieve some ideal, I don't think that's healthy at all. Right. (laughs) You know, and so again, I think we can make space for all types of expression. We can encourage people to take care of themselves without putting more pressure on them to conform to an expectation that serves no real purpose other than pleasing yeah. other people, you know? Obviously. And, oh and sidebar for anyone listening, that's the thing. I think um, if you like are new to the community and if you have friends who you're trying to support, um, just because like one person is okay with like using a certain word to describe themselves or again, even a certain idea and understanding of themselves doesn't mean other people will. So, you know, don't you, and that goes for any marginalized yeah. community. Like some people have like black friends who are fine with them, you know, using the N word. Um, you we know, just respect other people and exactly. realize that other people have feelings. And, blah, and blah, never blah. assume anything is my yeah. big thing. Yeah. Like, and, and not that even goes for people who like look the same as you. Who, cause, cause it's the thing. I think so many people like look at certain people, like if it's two white people, two cis white people, and they'll just assume, oh, you'll you'll agree with me, and so you don't really question that. But I think anytime you're meeting a new person, even if it's someone you knew, even us, we've worked together for months now, we kind of connect on a lot of stuff. Mm. But I'm not going to sit here and assume that we agree. Okay. So, did so I hope that see- answered the question about men and makeup. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Forever. Um. So growing up, have you always known that you were like different? Like, what was it like for you growing up? Was your family supportive? Um. Oh my God, this is going to get real. This is where we lay on the therapist's couch. Okay. Um, so it's, for me personally, again, different people have different experiences. You know, I'm kind of realizing now I'm 27 years old. I am in grad school. Old heck. Oh God, no. shut no. up. Oh when I first moved up to Iowa for my undergrad, you know, there was still the expectation that I'd move home when I was done. <laughs> I had an apartment back at home when I was, you know, got my first job out of college, but my family would always come to visit and they were very much an influence on my life. Nice. Um, so now I'm kind of on my own for the first time. And with this distance, distance, I'm kind of realizing that my upbringing was a lot more conservative than I realized it was, even though, um, you know, you asked if they were supportive and I think a better word, and I even hesitate to use this word, but 
it was more accepting or I think the best word is tolerant, you know? I had started, like, my grandma was, like, a huge advocate for me, and she, I didn't discover until years later, my uncle told me a story that, like, he was, like, talking bad about me, like, for wanting a Barbie or for wearing makeup or something. I don't know what age I was. And she literally like, advocated for me. That's um, awesome. But most of my family, you know, it's one of those things where it's, like, they let me do it, but they throw little jokes and little comments. Mm. And then, um, and even then, like, I was always pushed to, like, not do it, you know. And that's the thing. It wasn't just, like, a, a mean, like, you're, you know, a nice-spirited comment. It wasn't just, like, you know, teasing good in good spirits. It was, like, a joke meant to make me feel ashamed and make me not want to do what I wanted to do. Um, but nobody saw a problem with that, even though, you know, my grandma would, like, stand up for me once in a while. Um, you know, and so they let me do things that I wanted to do. You know, they bought me Barbie dolls and this and that. But it was never like, oh, of course we love you the way you are. Yeah. And I actually, um, again, getting a little personal here, but, um, you know, I feel like I, a lot of my issues today come from not having that foundation of knowing that I would be loved unconditionally. And that sounds really dark. And that's actually is that, um, is you know, you kind of grow up, even if your family turns out to be totally accepting. And even if they say they're accepting and you know, they'll be cool with it there's always this part of you that questions if you're yeah. going to be loved unconditionally. Yes. And it's like, that's something dark to go yeah, through. And, as, and when you don't receive that, like unconditional love, when you do come out, it's it really, sucks. really, but it's like, I hate this idea that once you transition, that it means you can only like stick to this one role now. And for me, again, I have a much more nuanced perception of gender. And I, I actually, I think part of my identity crisis comes from worrying that I'm inviting people to water me down and like, I do see, like, people think I want to be treated like any normal woman. And to an extent, I do in terms of, like, I don't want to be, like, have bricks thrown at me in the street, you know? Right. Um, and I'd rather be catcalled, apparently. But um, just kidding. <laughs> that doesn't happen. I'm too ugly. But, um, oh, my God. No, I'm kidding. But, um, you know, I'm not saying, like, you know, it's per- like there's, like, struggles no matter how you identify. But it is, like, um, you know, how I choose to negotiate my circumstance and my interest yeah. doesn't mean that I'm, like, I want to be, like, I want to be ignored. My differences to be ignored. I want my differences to be seen and acknowledged. That's just not always safe. Yeah, but, and, and this is another thing too, and it kind of speaks to trans identity and I think identity in general. And I think if people can take, I mean, not one thing, because I think I also want you to hopefully have a more sympathetic view of LGBT people. But if anybody can take um, another big thing away from this, in addition to just knowing about the trans community, I think it's to know how much about yourself that you don't really understand, yeah. you know, and to kind of recognize in yourself the places you might be like watering yourself down. Cause it's the thing, I think there's a difference between, and this is the big thing, you know, don't reduce yourself down and try to understand yourself as a human. Cause it's like, you know, you are so much more than what you understand about yourself. There are yeah. so many layers to understand. And I think if you view yourself as like, I'm a good person or I am a straight person, I'm this person, you know, you really don't, you know, like what, happened in the world to make you believe that and i'm not saying to have an existential crisis like i am i'm just saying to (laughs) use that understanding that everything that you understand about yourself in the world is the result of years and years of like conditioning and so much stuff like just coming into alignment and again i'm not trying to trigger an existential crisis or not trying to sound fake deep i'm just trying to say use that understanding to give sympathy to other people um that you know might be different from you um you should um also try to be okay with having um, you know, vulnerable conversations because I think because it makes us human exactly, and that's how you lead to those connections. Yeah, and connections. how else but, can you make connections? Exactly, with people? but but again, it shouldn't be expected of anyone, and you should feel safe asserting if you're not comfortable with something. Right. Um. So yeah, that was a lot of caveats before I dive into my question. Um, to the answer, but I don't know. Um. So advice for someone struggling with their identity, living as a trans person, or I don't know. Like, there's so many things. Like, I don't know if there's one piece of advice. I think. I think my biggest piece of advice that I think anyone can benefit from, including, and I don't want to like erase trans people, obviously, like, obviously I want to focus on other trans people and other LGBT people, but I think it's just a human thing that everybody should do is realize that, um, you know, there's no one right way to be, I think is the biggest piece of advice I want to give. Cause yeah, you know, um, that goes for, you know, if you're a cis person struggling to support someone who's coming out as LGBT and, you know, it goes against your religion or this or that, you know, it's like, okay, but like, you know, again, like, yes, that's your belief and that's fine. But it's like, there are so many ways to exist in this world and you should seek to understand other people. And then for you, if you're struggling with your identity, again, I don't want to offend anybody, but I am kind of hesitant to embrace certain labels myself because it does seem like it's, you know removing that like human aspect where it's like there's like wiggle room and everybody you know and and my personal belief about sexuality is that in a vac not in a vacuum but you know like I think <laughs> human sexual 
human sex. Yeah. This seems stupid, but human sexuality is just like a, you know, a you're attracted to other people, and then you do things with them, like these labels and this assumption that oh, of course you're going to be attracted to women, or of course you're not going to be attracted. Yeah, to right. Women. But no, to go oh, back to advice, like again, there's just no one right way to be, and like there's all these labels. Like use what's helpful for you, but don't think that you have to adapt this label. And that adapting a label means you have to exist this certain way. Don't think that you can't change labels. Being human is messy. Being human and these labels is just a collection of, you know, history and stigma and associations that we've created as a society. And there's no one true version of yourself. There's right. no one true version of society. There's just the society that we've built. And there's you, a human, trying to make sense of it all in the way that you feel best. And again, that goes for everybody. And you use that understanding not only to help you find a way to exist in the world and identify that makes you feel comfortable and and not only even just happy but just the important thing of like makes you want to be alive you know um there's this psychoanalytic theory it has like lots of problems with it but the biggest thing that i took away from it when i studied it in grad school is the idea that um and actually a trans author kate bornstein actually has a similar idea but in um in psychoanalytic theory it's basically this idea that there's no good or bad or healthy or unhealthy. It's just if something makes you want to stay alive, then that's good. You know, if it's, I yeah. forgot what the word is, but like if it's motivating, basically. Um, and then Kate Bornstein has this book called um, A Thousand and One Alternatives to Suicide. And it literally says like, do drugs, max out a credit card, like stuff like that. And it's like, obviously not the ideal, but it's like, if you're thinking of jumping off a bridge, you know, and Go my, buy ice cream. Exactly. Like, and, my friend, a room. <laughs> and my best friend actually kind of summed up this whole thing in, um, you know, a really cool, like a really like simple phrase. Um, she said, do anything but die. And so die. often because it's like, I think, you know, again, you get so distressing and what label's right? What's this? What's that? And it's like, there's no one right label for you. Yeah. There's no one right way to be. Just if it makes you feel good and feel happy and makes you want to be here, do it. And if it changes, then you're not wrong or bad. All you have to do as a human is keep doing things that make you want to be here. That was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much for no. talking with me on this podcast. And, and, and be sure you include the fact that um, I'm like single. Oh. I'm ready to mingle. <laughs> uh, Eve also is writing a memoir. Yeah. Or a memo. Oh, and also memoir. follow me on Instagram. I am at, <laughs> I am at Queen of Late Capitalism. One word: Queen of Late Capitalism. <laughs> you want your telephone number out there, also? Um, three one nine. No, <laughs> I can be reached on my hotline. No, you can call us at ultimate.com. <laughs> you also <laughs> loves to give the announcement on credit cards. Please buy a credit card. Attention, all take us. No, 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 no. Save twenty percent off. Yeah, no. If you come in. To Ulta, sign up for the credit card. It's a good deal. <laughs> It'll help you buy all the makeup. It's going to help you express your identity. And you'll save 20% with the credit card. Oh, my God. Bye, guys. You also get double points every time. <laughs>